Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, I wanted to take a look at this series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial over n to the n. I've seen this in many, many, if not every single Calc 2 class I've ever tutored. And this can be a really tricky problem if you're required to do it using direct comparison. And that's the technique that I'm gonna use here. So you might have a little bit of intuition about this. Certainly n to the power of n is a much faster sequence than n factorial. It grows much, much more quickly. And so that might give you an intuition to say that this series is going to converge, and it is. But that's not a good enough justification. I have to do some sort of official series test to show that this in fact converges. And the way that I'm gonna do that is through a direct comparison or simply a comparison test as you might call it. And if my intuition is telling me that this series is going to converge, then I want to bound, I want to bound this sequence above by something that I do know converges because the direct comparison test says if I'm bounded above by a convergent series, something I know converges, then the series in question must also converge. Well, maybe I won't even start by uh, greater than or equal to. I'm simply gonna say equal to and say, what, what does this actually mean? Well, n factorial by definition is n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down uh, until five, four, three, two, one, right? It just keeps on keeps on decreasing. So maybe I'll even put three times two times one. And there are n of these. n to the n? Well, that means n times itself n times. So this is actually n times n times n all the way down. And there are n of them here. Well, right off the bat, you can see uh, n over n, this first well, they'll cancel, that's nice. And now I need to do a direct comparison. So I need, to, I need to bound this. I need to say that this quantity is greater than or equal to something. And I want to pick it very carefully so that I know it converges when it's a series. Well, hmm, how about this? N minus one? That's less than simply n, right? So I'm just looking at this first pair. I'm gonna leave the denominator alone. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just leave that alone as it is. So I'm not gonna to touch the denominator. But in the numerator, n minus one is less than or equal to n. Fair. n minus two is also less than or equal to n. So I'm taking this n minus one, I'm bounding it above by n. I'm taking n minus two, I'm bounding it above by n. I'm gonna do that all the way down until this three, this three is going to be less than n, and then two times one, I'm just gonna leave those, I'm gonna leave them alone. Because what happens here? Well, this n and this n cancel. This n and this n cancel. The next n and this n would cancel. In fact, they would cancel all the way down. These n's would cancel and I'll be left with simply two times one over n times n, you might just call that two over n squared. Why is that important? Well, this, if I write it as a series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of two over n cubed, this is a p-series. This is a p-series with p equaling two. So we know that this series is a convergent series. I don't know what it converges to, but it converges. And now what that means, we showed that our series in question is less than a convergent series. That means our series must converge by direct comparison. Wow, okay, so that was a little, a little tricky. You know, you really kind of had to think about what does this mean and you had to come up with a creative way to bound this above. I hope this video helped you out. If it did and you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing. Best of luck with all of your future series questions and have a great day.